Welcome to a moment of meditation. I am Patricia Lee, the assistant chaplain of the village here. How are you today? Has it been difficult for you under this stay at home order? Or are you finding interesting things to enjoy? One word we hear a lot these, these days is essential. What is important? What we cannot live without? For the employees here, our work is essential. The residents depend on us. For all of us, food is essential. So grocery stores stay open, but restaurants for dining in are not. So restaurants are mostly closed. For me, I suddenly realized that many things that occupy my time and my energy are not essential. So when new things are taken away, I find I am freed up to attend to certain important things that have been crowded out, neglected. One of the most important things in life that I hardly paid attention to in the past is the meaning of Easter. After the Easter egg hunt is over, the Easter baskets are given away and the Easter lilies are taken down. Easter is over and we go back to our busy everyday life. But this year, except for the Easter lilies, we couldn't celebrate Easter with our traditional activities. When the trappings are stripped away, the core of the historic event of Easter becomes the main thing. And I have been struck by the immense implication of Christ's res resurrection for Christ himself, and especially for us mortals, created and loved by him. The moment of meditation is an opportunity for me to bring you along on my continual exploration. Let's quiet our hearts and hear this declaration by the Lord Jesus himself as recorded in the Gospel of John chapter 11. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. Dan Stokes will now lead us to sing the first two stanzas of the hymn, Christ the Lord is Risen Today. Of the places. 
Pay special attention to Jesus, what he said, and how he conducted himself. Imagine how you would respond. John chapter 11, from verse 1. Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and his sister Martha. It was Mary who anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was ill. So the sisters went to him, saying, Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, This illness does not lead to death. It is for the glory of God, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to the disciples, let's go to Judea again. Our friends, Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I go to awaken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will recover. Now Jesus had spoken of his death, but they thought that he meant taking rest in, his, in sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus has died, and for your sake, I am glad that I am not there, so that you may believe. But let us go to him. So Thomas called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, let us also go, that we may die with him. Now when Jesus came, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Bethany was near Jerusalem, about two miles off, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them concerning their brother. So when Martha heard that Jesus was coming, he went and met him, but Mary remained seated in the house. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that whatever you ask from God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet he shall live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who is coming into the world. When she had said this, she went and called her sister Mary, saying in private, The teacher is here and is calling for you. And when she heard it, she rose quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come into the village, but was still in the place where Martha had met him. When the Jews who were with her in the house consoling her saw Mary rise quickly and go out, they followed her, supposing that she was going to the tomb to weep there. Now when Mary came to where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet saying to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who had come with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in his spirit and greatly troubled. And he said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. So the Jews said, see how he loved him. But some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man also have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, deeply moved again, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and the stone lay against it. Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, by this time there will be an odor, for he had been dead four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed, 
you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I said this on account of the people standing around, that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said these things, he cried out with a loud, loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The man who had died came out, his hands and feet bound with linen strips, and his face wrapped with a cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen what he did, believed in him. But some of them went to the Pharisees and told them what Jesus had done. I would just like to point out four things among many. The first thing, a dear friend of Jesus was ill, even dying. But Jesus did not hurry up to go save him. Instead, he tarried for two more days before making the trip. Everyone was upset with him, but he took his time. The reason? He said in verse 4, It is for the glory of God, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Now we are in the middle of a pandemic. Many people get sick, even die. We want, G we want God to hurry up and stop the suffering. But so far, it seems that God is taking his time. We can trust that he has a very good reason. Point number two. Both Martha and Mary, the two sisters of Lazarus, struggle with their faith. On the one hand, they believe that Jesus had the power to heal. But on the other hand, they grieve that he didn't come soon enough. The conversation between Martha and Jesus presents a picture of how Christ challenged and stretched her faith. We too struggle with our faith in God. Know that we can be honest with Him even with our little faith. He will reveal Himself to us. Point number three. When Jesus approached the tomb, in verse 33 we read, he was deeply moved in his spirit and greatly troubled. The English translation does not get across the intensity of Jesus' emotion. It literally means he was profoundly indignant and angry, like a charging horse, growling or snorting. Bible scholars cannot agree on what Jesus was so strongly angry about. It could be the power and devastation of death the grief of his loved ones, or the unbelief of the Jews and their hypocrisy, or even his impending death due to man's sins. And we also read in verse 35, he wept. Nowadays, we tend to treat death in a sanitized manner, downplaying the grief and devastation. It is important to know that death is not what God had planned for his creation. It is not the way it's supposed to be. And we also take the power of Jesus lightly, dismissing his promise to give life. All these would incur God's wrath. The last point, number four. Most importantly, remember that Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. On that first Easter morning, that came true. With that in mind, let us sing the last two stanzas of the hymn, Christ the Lord is Risen Today.
Let's close with this prayer. God of our salvation, you have restored us to life. You have brought us back into your love by the triumphant death and resurrection of Christ. Continue to heal us as we go on to live and work in the power of your spirit to your praise and glory. Amen. See you next time.